great being shuttled. Unlike the commoners that are using their, their, their feet, we use the shuttle. Peasants. Peasants, that's right, that's right, that's right. Well, you must be have an easy time uh, getting to sleep at night after to pedal miles and miles all day, huh? You know what, man? My body's used to it. Is it really? Wow. Yeah. I do this on the beach every day. Oh, you're the man. You're the man. I was struggling with the two steps I had to walk over towards you. <laughs> <laughs> where's, where's, where's my oxygen tank? One, two, three. By the end of 1922, Lathabram was approaching bankruptcy, unable to pay his rent. Walt moved in with Ub and his mother. After two uncomfortable weeks, Walt moved his toothbrush and suitcase to the office and slept on the couch. Once a week, he went to the railroad station where he could rent a bathtub, towel and soap for a dime. The studio was temporarily saved when the Kansas City dentist, Dr. Thomas McCrum, paid Walt $500 to produce a film called Tommy Tucker's Tooth. In that film, which combined cartoon and live action, Tommy learns the importance of brushing three times a day. Walt was alone in his office when Dr. McCrum phoned, ready to conclude the deal. Could you come to my office tonight? said Dr. McCrum. We'll wrap up the details and I'll give you a check for the first payment. I can't come, Walt said. I don't have any shoes. No shoes, said Dr. McCrum. I took my only pair to the shoemaker to have them resold, Walt explained. They're ready, but the shoemaker won't let me have them unless I pay him a dollar fifty. I'll be right over, the doctor said. He drove to Walt's office, paid the shoemaker for the shoes, then sat down with Walt and concluded the film deal. Walt hired back some of his animators and made the movie. Twenty years later, after Mickey Mouse made Walt famous, that dental hygiene film continued to be shown around Kansas City. Thank you, thank you.